Alright guys, BLM here, back with another Survivor What If video. Last time I did do What If Minority Alliances Weren't Pagonged, this time we're doing the complete opposite of that. So we're going to be doing What If Majority Alliances Stuck Together. Essentially, what if these groups that held the majority at one point after the merge didn't end up turning against each other and made it to the end together. And I'll fully admit here, this video is a bit of a mess. Due to the fact that obviously during certain seasons there are no alliances that ended up turning against each other so there's some seasons that there's nothing to really talk about and there's other seasons where there's a multitude of alliances to talk about and to be honest some of these scenarios kind of play out similarly to how they worked out in real life it's just that certain players get voted out a little bit later than what they would have like they don't get flipped on as early as they would have in the real life scenario but I do still feel like there are some interesting scenarios within this video so let's just get started we're going to go through chronological order and we're obviously starting off with Survivor Borneo, but to be honest, like we can just rush through Borneo, Australia, Outback, Africa, Marquesas, and Thailand, as there really just isn't that much to talk about. Literally no alliances to talk about from Borneo, Africa, and Thailand. Australia and Outback, you do have the Ogukor Alliance that Jerry and Amber got kicked out of a little bit early, but again, at the end of the day, I think that group still plays out similarly, where even if they make it to Final Five, Jerry gets voted out, followed by Amber. And then we get the same final three scenario. With Marquesas, we kind of have row two. I mean, I talked about them in my previous video as well. But under the qualifications for this video, technically it will be row two as a whole, not just the row two four. So it will be the row two four plus Pascal and Nalia. And again, it doesn't really matter. It plays out similarly to how I talked about it last time with Pascal and Nalia probably getting voted out first out of that group. Zoe probably being next and then Tammy being in the best spot to end up winning the game where both John and the general are taking her to the end and she probably ends up winning a jury vote against both. But with those very early seasons out of the way, let's just jump right into the Amazon where we did have an alliance here to talk about the group that did stick together to vote out Roger. So here we have Jenna, Matthew, Rob, Heidi, Christy, Alex, and Dina. Now this could go a multitude of ways. I mean, obviously in the real life scenario, Dina ends up getting flipped on first largely because she decides to try to flip against Alex. Obviously, that same scenario could happen here. If that doesn't happen, I think the more than likely boot here is Matthew, with Christy being a boot pretty soon afterwards. Really, I, I think that Final Four alliance, in many ways, is mostly is talking about what if that Final Four alliance really stuck together. The Jenna, Rob, Heidi, and Alex alliance that held the majority at Final Seven until Rob flipped against them. In here, obviously, if they stuck together, I think Rob goes out first. I mean... Alex blatantly told Rob that he was going to be voted out, which is why Rob ends up flipping on him. And at that point, obviously, Alex is the easy boot next. I mean, as Jen and Heidi are both going to take each other to the end, where I do think Heidi beats Jenna. While the show does try to portray Heidi as this, like, massive idiot, it does seem like Heidi had more respect from a game level out there than Jenna. So I do think Heidi has the advantage in a jury vote. However, if Alex gets the end against either of them, I think Alex more than likely wins, as Alex seemed to be perceived as the biggest threat out there. So really, if everything had gone according to plan for Jenna, I do think Jenna probably ends up losing, unlike the real-life scenario where she wins due to being the last person standing and winning out from that point forward. Next up for Pearl Islands, here we do have the Drake tribe plus Lil. Obviously, it gets broken apart when they flip against Rupert. Here... I think first up, I mean, if we're at the final six, I think we go to Rocks. I think Fair Play, Burton, and Lil vote together, while Rupert, Sandra, and Krista vote together. If the Fair Play side wins, I do think Fair Play and Burton take each other to the end, where Fair Play probably ends up winning due to this anti returnee sentiment that probably would harm Burton in terms of his winning chances. If either of them get to the end with Lil, I do think Lil is the biggest goat there and probably does lose to both of them. Though I think the most likely scenario with Lil winning Final Immunity is probably taking Burton to the end. Now, there's also a possibility of Lil flipping at that vote. I mean, I don't think Lil was 100% going to Rocks for Burton and Fair Play. And if Lil does flip or the Rupert side does end up winning out on the Rock draw, I do think we still get a final three of Rupert, Sandra, and Krista, where Rupert needs to win Final Immunity to get to the end, but I do think Rupert wins if he gets to the end. While if it's Sandra versus Krista, it really is just up in the air. I, I don't know where that vote goes. I don't think we've really ever gotten any indication of where that vote would go. If I were to guess, I would say Sandra probably wins. 
largely because like I've never really seen Krista really be able to articulate her strategy. But it's like at the same time, it's like the jury members did not love Sandra on that season. But then again, I don't think they love Krista either. So I would say Sandra has the advantage there, though. Really, there's no real proof of that. Now we can just skip over Survivor All-Stars. There's no real majority group that broke apart there. So let's move on to Vanuatu, where we have a very clear one in Yasur. Obviously, all the women that end up flipping against each other at the final seven. So in this scenario, I, I think Eliza is the, clearly the first boot. I mean, she was going to be booted at the final seven had Twyla and Scout not flipped the game. But however, in this situation, Twyla and Scout would not have the numbers to flip the game. I mean, they would only be able to go to rocks and... I doubt Twyla and Scout are going to rocks for Eliza, especially when they had no real connective tissue without Chris being there to get Eliza on their side. So I think Eliza is the boot here. And I think Twyla and Scout are probably next. I, I think Leanne and Amy probably team up with Julie to take them out. And at that point, I think Leanne and Amy take each other to the end. And in a jury vote, I would guess Leanne wins the game. I mean, from what we've heard after the season, it does seem like Leanne got a lot of the credit for being the linchpin of the women's group. And that's a lot of the reason why she was targeted. So I do feel like she probably had more of the respect from a jury, especially with her being a more social player than Amy was during that season. So I would guess Leanne probably wins. However, if Julie gets to the end, I think Julie probably beats both of them. I feel pretty confident in Julie beating Amy. I don't know about Leanne. I think Julie for sure has like people like a Chris, has an Eliza, I think there's a chance she gets the two other men considering she was closer to them as well, though obviously they were upset at her flipping on them, but I think Julie definitely has a chance there. Now, obviously we will skip over Palau. There's no majority alliance that fell apart there, so we will move on to Guatemala. We're here we have the Nunakum, essentially that group that fell apart when Danny ends up winning immunity at final six. So, I mean, well, we can add in Jamie, but like, what's the point? Jamie probably goes home first anyway. And really, I think the season probably just plays the same. You just take Danny out. I mean, I think first up, I think Judd is the next to go. I think he was in a position where, again, like it was Lydia in the middle with Stephanie and Rafe on one side and Cindy and Judd kind of on another side. But then I don't think Judd and Cindy were thinking about picking up Lydia as we saw in the final six scenario where that doesn't happen. So I think more than likely Lydia sides with Stephanie and Rafe votes out Judd followed by Cindy. We get to a final three where Stephanie probably wins final immunity and takes out Lydia and Rafe ends up winning the game against her. I think that's more than likely the scenario that we end up seeing here. Now from Survivor Panama, here we have the new Kasaya tribe. And again, I think initially this plays out similarly to the real life scenario as well. I don't know whether or not to include the Bruce Medivac, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter. I don't think Bruce is getting to the end anyway. And I think Shane and Courtney get voted out back to back and we get a final three of Aris, Suri, and Danielle. Now in this scenario, Aris and Suri probably take each other to the end while Danielle probably ends up taking Suri to the end. If Danielle and Suri are at the end, I do think Suri easily beats her. If it's Aris versus Suri, I think it's a bit more interesting. And this is a scenario I've talked about in the past. I do think Aris probably gets the win, but it is very much up in the air. I think Aris gets the former Lamina votes in Terry, Austin, and Sally, while Suri gets most of the Kasaya votes in Danielle, Bruce, and Shane. I think Courtney becomes the swing vote there, and I think Courtney leans Aris, but I don't think it's a guarantee by any means. I think either of them could technically win that. Now for Cook Islands, we, again, don't really have a group to talk about here. I already talked about the Rarotonga tribe on my previous video, so let's move on to Fiji, where we have the new Moto tribe, where we have Earl, Cassandra, Yao, Boo, Stacy. And we can go with or without Michelle. Let's talk about with first. Now, first off, I think Earl, Yao, and Michelle are definitely in the advantage to get to the end. Cassandra was already leaning on their side. So I do think Boo and Stacy get voted out back to back. I think there's a chance that Earl flips against Yao to take Cassandra and Michelle to the end to where I think Earl easily wins that final three. But to be honest, even if he doesn't do that flip, I think he probably wins in a final three of him, Yao, and Michelle anyway. So I think Earl's definitely an advantage there. And if Michelle isn't included in this, then I think more than likely we just get the same scenario where he gets to the end with Yao and Cassandra and Earl still wins. Yeah, I, I think Earl is definitely in the best spot to win a jury vote. Again, there has been this debate over Earl versus Yao Man who would have won. I'm very inclined to believe Earl would have won. 
despite the reunion show saying differently, especially with Yao Man himself having even said in interviews that Earl would have beaten him if he got into the end. Let's move on to China. China, we do have the Fei Long tribe. And again, I think this is another situation where it probably just stays the same. I think Jean Robert and James are the first two to be taken out there, which leaves us with the same final four. So obviously probably the same final three. Though, I think what's interesting here is that because they are further into the game, does this mean that James has both of his idols still? Which, if that's the case, then I do think this changes up a bit. Obviously, John Robert still gets voted out. And since the final five is the final opportunity to use an idol, James probably uses his idol there. Now, the question is, who is he idol out? And to be honest, I don't know. Now, at this point, like he's not thinking that Todd and Amanda are against him. And with him having a good relationship with Denise, I actually think he probably idols out Courtney. Just as like the only person that he's not aligned with. But it is definitely a bit of a wonky vote there. But if he idols out Courtney, I mean, I think James is still the next to go anyway. So we just get in a Todd, Amanda, Denise final three, which I think Todd wins pretty much with the same votes. I think there's a chance Jean Robert flips to Denise, but I think if Todd still gives the same final jury performance, I, I think probably Todd still gets to Jean Robert's vote. So I think everything still plays out pretty similarly. Now for Micronesia, where we have two different groups to talk about here. First up, we have the favorites that did end up making the merge. Obviously, Eliza goes home first. So I'm really, we're going to be talking about the James, Ozzy, Amanda, Parvati, Sari contingent, where I think it's pretty obvious that James and Ozzy go home back to back. And from that point, it's like the real life scenario still happens. Again, we're going to still assume it's a final two. So uh, more than likely, Parvati and Amanda get to the end. Parvati wins. Now we also have the Black Widow Brigade, where, I mean, to be honest, it's actually the same thing again, isn't it? It's just Alexis and Natalie being voted out back to back. And then again, we get Amanda, Parvati, and Sari. Again, like at the end of the day, that was the most likely final three based on how the game had played out. And if Parvati gets to the end with Amanda, Parvati wins as she does in the real life scenario. Next up for Gabon, here we do have the Fong tribe plus Sugar. And also, I guess, technically minus Randy. But either way, we have the group that did vote together to vote out Charlie. So we have Susie, Sugar, Maddie, Kenny, and Crystal. And I think this votes out pretty similarly to the real life scenario as well. I think Kenny and Crystal get voted out back to back. Leaving us with a Susie Sugar Maddie final three where Maddie should pretty handily win that with no one really respecting Sugar and then Susie having all of her votes that she got in the real life scenario being taken away by Maddie. I think Maddie easily wins. However, there's also a scenario where Sugar decides to vote out Susie in favor of keeping Kenny because up until the final five, that was what was going to happen. I mean, that was at least Sugar's plan at that point was to go to the end with Kenny and Maddie. And in that scenario, I think Kenny more than likely wins the jury vote with the votes of the former Codas plus Crystal, though there is some wonkiness because I don't think Bob votes for Randy. And I think there's a chance that Randy could vote for Maddie, but it's like, I, I think Ken definitely comes into that situation with the advantage from a jury vote perspective. Next up for Survivor Token Chains, where we have the Tambira tribe. And here we do have, I, I think probably more than likely Brendan and Sierra being voted out back to back. They were obviously on the outskirts of that group, followed by Aaron, leaving us with the final three of Coach, Tyson, and Debbie, where I think Coach and Tyson probably take each other to the end, where Tyson more than likely wins the season. Now, if Debbie does win Final Immunity, I think she probably takes Coach, but it's definitely not guaranteed. But if she gets the end with Coach, I think she probably wins. If she gets the end against Tyson, I think Tyson probably beats her. But again, this is under the scenario where Brendan and Sierra get voted out right away. There's also a chance that Aaron could flip to go to Rocks. Obviously, Aaron knew about the plan to flip on Brendan and Sierra, and if she really wanted to, she could go to Rocks for them. Obviously, if the Coach side ends up winning, we get... A very similar scenario to what I just talked about. However, if the Brendan and Sierra side end up winning and we get to that final three of Brendan, Sierra, and Aaron, obviously Aaron is not in a great spot at that point, but I do think Brendan is probably the most likely winner from that group. Despite people being annoyed by him, I do think people were annoyed by Sierra a lot more and even Aaron a lot more, even if Aaron does somehow get to the end against Brendan. I, I think Brendan is in the best position to win there. If it's Sierra versus Aaron, I mean, like, I guess Aaron wins. It's just so many people out there did not like Sierra, but it's like, I could see them creating this underdog story for her as well. So it's like, it could technically go either way, but I feel like Aaron has the advantage. Now from Samoa, here we do have the Galoo tribe. So a lot of people here. So here we got Brett, Shambo, Monica, Dave, John, 
Laura, Kelly, and Eric. Now, obviously, in the real-life scenario, Eric gets voted out first. I think that probably still happens here, followed by John, being someone that was closely aligned with Eric. After that, I think Shambo and Dave are probably the next two voted out. Shambo just being a general outsider, and Dave being someone not truly aligned with that girls plus Brett contingent. So that leaves us with the final four of Brett, Monica, Laura, and Kelly. Obviously, Brett seems like the easy target to take out there, leaving us with a Monica, Laura, Kelly final three, where I do think Laura wins that jury vote. I think Laura definitely has the most respect out of those three, though I do think there's definitely a chance there could be a bitter jury. I could see Russell Hans being very bitter at Laura and trying to turn the jury against her. And if he does end up successfully doing that, I feel like Kelly is probably the next option. But to be honest, it could be Monica too. I think it's not super clear there. But also, I think we're under the assumption here that if Brett gets to the end, I do think Brett probably wins. Just because he's an affable enough guy to where everyone would still want to vote for him. Next up, we're at Heroes vs. Villains. And I mean, we don't have much to talk about here. Obviously, we have the villains, but I think that group just stays the same. I think first, Danielle goes home with Russell flipping against her. Though, I mean, to be fair, Sandra didn't want to flip against Danielle. So, I mean, I guess technically there's a chance that something else happens, like maybe a Jerry boot. And to be honest, actually, if that does happen, I guess there could be some intrigue from the next vote essentially becoming a Russell versus Sandra on like who is Danielle and Parvati going to take to the end. If they take Russell to the end, I think Parvati has the best chance of winning a jury vote there. If they take Sandra to the end, I think Sandra beats both of them. So that's kind of somewhat interesting, but I think the most likely scenario that happens is Danielle gets voted out of five, Jerry at four, and we get the same sort of scenario as real life. Now we're moving on to Nicaragua, where we have that group that did vote together to vote out Marty. So here we have Chase, Sash, Holly, Jane, Kelly, Nayanka, and Brenda. Now, obviously, I, I think Brenda probably goes first. I mean, we obviously see her get voted out immediately after Marty. So I don't see why that changes if they get further into the game, especially because supposedly Brenda did flip against Sash and Sash flipped against her. And that's a lot of the reason why that vote happens to begin with. So I, I think Brenda does go next. And I think Sash probably goes over immediately after her. I mean, I think the Chase, Holly, Jane contingent really stays in power after that. And I think more than likely they are the final three with Chase or Jane winning. I mean, I guess Jane could possibly get the respect from a jury, but I feel like Chase is more likely to have the respect from more of the jury members there, especially considering how anti-Jane Marty would be. And I think he was a pretty important jury member. Though, I, I do think Chase and Holly obviously knew that Jane was a threat and would have tried to flip against her. And if that's the case, then I think they probably take Nayanka to the end with them, to which I think is a much more secure Chase win. I think at that point, it's 100% Chase's winning. I, I don't see how the other two get nearly enough votes to get the win. So I really feel like Chase is the most likely winner from this season had Fabio not gone on the mini run that he did. And we can even talk about the Brenda vote alliance, the alliance that voted out her, which to be honest is a pretty similar group. I mean, we just take out Kelly and add in Benry, Dan, and Fabio. And to be honest, it's, it's the same thing. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. I think the Benry, Fabio, Dan contingent is on the outs. They get voted out, and we are left in the same situation as the Marty vote alliance. So it's like, I, I do think Chase was in a very good position to win the game had Fabio not won out, had people not quit the game. I mean, I think that's really a large reason of why Chase ends up losing that season. Now, obviously, we're from Redemption Island and South Pacific. We don't have any alliances to talk about because both of the majority alliances on both those seasons end up sticking together. So now we're going to move on to Survivor One World, where we can talk about the new Solani tribe. Kim, Sabrina, Chelsea, Kat, Troyzan, Jay, and Mike that Kim was initially loyal to early on in the merge, but then decides to flip on them after the first vote. And here, I think Mike obviously goes first. I mean, he was clearly the person that was not trusted within that group. And that's why Kim was able to flip the game so easily on him. And then after that, I think Jay and Troy's going to go home. I think Kat gets voted after. Again, it plays out very similar to the real life scenario. It's just that there's no buffer in Tarzan, Christina, and Alicia to rely on. So at that point, we get the same final three. And I think Kim still wins a jury vote. I think Kim was winning a jury vote against anybody by the time of the merge. So to be honest, in many ways, this kind of plays out in the most boring possible way. Obviously, I mean, Troy Zan technically had an idol. I mean, if we want to add the idol to the situation, then 
I think it could be a little bit more interesting. But even then, it's like, are we really saying that Kim doesn't split the votes at that point where it's a very good likelihood that Troy Zan has the idol? I mean, we do know that she like frantically changed the votes up on the J vote to split the votes. So I, I feel like more than likely Kim is someone that is going to split the votes. I still think Kim gets to the end and probably still wins against anybody. Next up, we got Philippines. So we have the Tandang tribe, which I think plays out kind of boringly as well. I mean, like we have RC going home first, followed by Scoopin and Lisa as they weren't in the core three. And we have a final three of Pete, Artis, and Abby Maria, where I do feel like Pete has the most respect there to win a jury vote. And Artis was someone that rubbed some people the wrong way, plus also wasn't really even playing the game that hard. Then we have Abby, who is another person that really irritated people out there. So I think Pete is definitely the most playable option there. Now after Tendang, we can also talk about the Artist Vote Alliance, which is essentially the Kalabaos plus Malcolm plus Scoopin. And do we want to add in Lisa? But it's like, again, I feel like that just plays out just like it did in real life. Like, I don't think much changes there. Next up for Karamoan. And we do have a couple groups to talk about here. So... First up, we do have the favorites, and here I think Malcolm and Corinne were obviously on the outs, right? And that's a lot of the reason why they do try to end up flipping. But they were definitely on the outskirts of the power structure. I think the core had become Philip, Andrea, Cochran, and Don, and I feel like at that point, Malcolm and Corinne are the biggest threats to them. I think immediately after that, probably Eric and Brenda are targeted as well. I think Andrea is probably the next one to go as being the biggest threat within that main core. And that leads us to the final three of Cochran, Don, and Philip, where, I mean, Cochran wins. So again, plays out somewhat similarly to the real life scenario. Now we can also talk about the new Gota tribe, which technically never voted together, but they were a majority group coming into the merge. Like if they had stuck together, they could have had the numbers. So this includes Sherry, Eddie, Eric, Brenda, Andrea, Reynolds, and Malcolm. So essentially, I think it becomes the three amigos versus Eric, Brenda, and Andrea with Sherry as the swing bow. And I do feel like Sherry sides with the former favorites. And I think they take out the three amigos, take out Andrea along the way, and leaving us with the final three of Brenda, Eric, and Sherry, where Brenda more than likely wins. That is unless Andrea tries to flip to the three amigos at some point. But from that point, it kind of becomes too wonky. I mean, if the three amigos get to the end together, obviously Malcolm ends up winning that vote. If Andrea gets to the end with the three amigos minus Malcolm, I think Andrea ends up winning that vote. So the, really, it's just a very wonky situation. And to be honest, it's a situation that isn't really even that realistic considering they never even voted together. Next up from Blood versus Water, we do have the alliance that voted out Aris, which was essentially the new Tadhana minus Aris and then plus Laura Moret. And I think this probably just plays out the same without there being an opportunity to go to rocks at any point due to the exclusion of Katie. So essentially, obviously, Laura Moret goes first, followed by Caleb, Hayden, Sierra, and then we get a final three of Tyson, Monica, and Jervis where Tyson wins. There is also the chance that with less numbers here, Hayden and Caleb are more willing to work with Sierra and Laura Moret, which in turn would mean... They work together at seven, take out the other three, and then I think Laura Moret probably gets voted out at four, leading us to a Sierra Hayden Caleb final three where it's up in the air. I mean, I would say Hayden has the advantage in terms of the jury, but I definitely think there's a chance for all three of them to get the win depending on their arguments there. Next up, we have Survivor Kagi on. Here we do have the new Solana tribe that did get the majority after Cass flipped. So here we have Tony, Wu, I guess we'll add Cass, Trish, Jeffra, and LJ, and really just plays out the same. I mean, I do think Trish and LJ, I do think LJ's the first to go, then Jeffra, then Trish, then we get the same final three. Now there is a chance that Trish refuses to flip against LJ because in this scenario, that would be necessary, which in that scenario, I think more than likely Cass is the first one to be voted out. And then from that point, it plays out the same anyway except we get Trish in Cass's place but Wu probably still takes Tony to the end anyway so Tony wins either way now for San Juan del Sur where we do have the alliance that did vote out Josh together so essentially the real life final six minus Keith but add in Jeremy and to be honest I don't think this plays that interestingly because I think first up I think Jeremy goes home first as you would expect then I do think Missy and Baylor probably flip on John Though at the same time, I guess John would have an idol, but then again, at the same time also, Missy refused to directly vote for John, which would mean they would have to go for Jacqueline anyway. So I guess Jacqueline would go first, and then John would go at the final four. Leaving us in a final three scenario of Natalie, Missy, and Baylor, where Natalie still wins a jury vote. However, if John ends up squeaking through to the end somehow, 
I do think there's a chance he could beat Natalie, especially in this scenario where Natalie doesn't make all the moves that she ends up making. He's, uh, I think really a lot of the reason why Natalie is such a front runner to win in San Ronaldo Sur is because of all the moves that she made along the way. While in this scenario, she didn't have to make those moves until the final five, which I think really lessens her story there. So I do think there's a chance John Mish beats Natalie in this scenario. But if this was the real life scenario that we saw where Jeremy gets blindsided much earlier on, Natalie makes moves from much earlier on, I do think Natalie still beats John. Now for Worlds Apart, and we, we don't have anything to talk about. Because, I mean, the majority alliance, like, while they ended up splitting when, like, Mike realized he was on the bottom, it's like, they still ended up being the final seven anyway, so it's like, there's nothing to talk about. Now for Cambodia, where this is kind of the start of where things get a bit crazy in Survivor, where there's so many different groups coming together. So really, for the remainder of the seasons, we actually have a good amount of groups to talk about. Let's start off with the non-Witches Coven contingent that obviously had the majority very early on in the merge. So we have Jeremy, Spencer, Tasha, Keith, Kimmy, Joe, Steven, Kelly, and Savage. And I think with this group being narrowed down here, I think the Wigglesworth flip is less likely to happen. I think the most likely boot here is probably Joe if he doesn't have immunity. And I think you follow that up probably with Keith. And then once those two are gone, I think it's just very easy to vote out the remaining Takeo members, with that being Wigglesworth and Spencer, leaving us with Jeremy, Tasha, Kimmy, Stephen Fishback, and Andrew Savage. And I think the easy boot there is probably Savage. I mean, I think Jeremy would be hesitant as he wants Savage's jury vote, but I think you gotta vote out Savage at that point. And then at that point, I think it's either Steven or Tasha. I think really it's a question of how big of a threat is Steven perceived to be? Because I do think Jeremy and Tasha stick together. I mean, I guess you can also create a scenario where Kimmy is willing to flip against Jeremy earlier on. And maybe that's something that gets attempted to happen. But I don't think Steven's ever on board for that. So I think more than likely we get into a final three scenario of Jeremy, Steven, and Kimmy. Or Jeremy, Steven, and Tasha. Maybe even a Jeremy, Tasha, Kimmy. Final three. Either way, I feel like Jeremy wins any of the scenarios that he's in the end against. Yeah, I just don't see the numbers coming together to get rid of Jeremy anytime in the end game. And considering Jeremy also had two idols throughout this game, it's like... I don't think it happens. Now we can also talk about the alliance that did vote out Steven. So here we have Spencer, Wentworth, Keith, Abby, and Joe. Um, obviously Joe's the first boot. I think Kelly and Abby stick together. I think Keith does go for Spencer, which I think will force Spencer to go for Keith. Again, it's just a matter of who Wentworth and Abby side with. I think they more than likely side with Keith. I think Wentworth probably wins the jury vote in any scenario at that point anyway. Now for Go Wrong, where we do have the Brawn and Beauty Alliance that did break apart almost instantly. But we do have Michelle, Ty, Sydney, Jason, Julia, Scott, and Nick. Now, obviously, in the real life scenario, Nick did go out first, and I think that probably still happens here. Then at that point, the Bronze definitely have the majority here, as they also have Ty on their side. Mind you, Sydney could flip against them, but even that would cause a tie. So I think more than likely, Michelle is the next to go as she's less aligned than Julia is to them. And at that point, I think Jason and Scott are really in the middle of everything. I mean, they have Ty, Sydney, and Julia all as being closer to them at, than they are to each other. So unless all three of them get together to flip the game on them, I think more than likely they're getting to the end. And I think at that point, without Sydney ever flipping, I think they do take Sydney to the end. Where I do think Sydney or Jason end up winning a jury vote. Again, a lot of the reason why Sydney couldn't win a jury vote, or at least was less likely to win a jury vote on Korong, was because she had this contingent that was very bitter against her in Jason Scott and Julia. But in this scenario, that never happens. So because I think she's a lot more playable to the jury as someone to vote for. But at the same time, I do think that Jason would have also had a shot as well. Obviously, in this scenario, Jason would have played the hardest in the game. And I think he also has a decent backstory as well. So I think either one of them can win. I, I don't see how Scott wins a jury vote here, though. Now, we can also talk about the girls plus Joe alliance that essentially formed after Nick vote that didn't end up sticking together for too long. But here, I mean, uh, we do have the brains having three people here already in Aubrey, Joe, and Debbie. That's already three out of six. I think more than likely Michelle and Julia are on the outs and they get voted out one after another. Unless they decide to go for Debbie like they did in the real life scenario due to how much of a wild card she is. But I think with them being this far into the game, I think they would have been more willing to take Debbie further into the game. But even then, I do think she eventually gets cut before the end. I think the most likely final three scenario is Aubrey, Joe, and Sydney, where I think Aubrey has the advantage here in the jury vote. 
I think Sydney could definitely win as well. I don't think it's out of the round possibility. And to be honest, even Joe could technically win if they're really that bitter. But I do think Aubrey has more locked votes on the jury there than Sydney does. Now for Millennials versus Gen X, where the first group of people that we can talk about is the people that voted out Michelle, which is essentially the Gen Xers plus the Adam, Hannah, and Zeke contingent. So here we have Adam, Hannah, Ken, David, Brett, Sunday, Zeke, Jessica, and Chris. Now, like the real life scenario, I do think Chris is the first to go. And I do think that leaves Brett and Sunday on the outs, especially because now Zeke doesn't really have the numbers to flip the game against the David contingent, even inherently. I mean, because that group inherently has five people. So Zeke really has no other options. And I can definitely see Zeke trying to make it work and it not working out for him and probably getting taken out because of that. However, I do think David is very clearly the biggest threat on the board at that point by the time we get to five, and I do think they flip against him. And I do think this endgame really leaves Jessica in a pretty good spot, actually, where I think she easily wins against Ken and Hannah, where she is the closest person out there to both Ken and Adam, and I think she does easily win against both Ken and Hannah. I think she has a good chance of beating Adam, though I think it's a bit more of a question mark there. But I do think Jessica is actually the most likely winner in this scenario. Now, we can also talk about the group that did go to Rocks that pretty much fell apart almost instantly afterwards. So we have Brett, Jay, Sunday, Will, and Zeke. Now, I do think Will and Jay are on the outs of this group. So we more than likely do get a Zeke, Brett, Sunday final three unless they try to flip against Zeke. But again, there's not much time here. At the final five here, I think Jay's got to be the first one to go. And maybe Will can get to the end by flipping Brett in Sunday against Zeke. But if he does, it's like, wouldn't Will just win that final three due to have being able to pull off that move? But obviously in the other scenario where Zeke gets the end, I think Zeke wins. I think Zeke wins against anybody on that season. Next up for Survivor Game Changers, we can talk about the alliance that did come together to vote out Aussies. So here we have Sarah, Brad, Troyzan, Ty, Sierra, and Debbie. And on the offset, I, I do feel like Sarah and Ty seem to be on the outs. And if they are vote out back to back, I think Debbie is probably next, leaving us with the Brad, Troy, and Sierra final three, which I do think Sierra has the most respect from the jury to get the win there. Though at the same time, I do think there is a chance that Sarah could orchestrate a flip here against Brad. But even then, it's like, even if she does get like Debbie and Ty on board, it's like, that's only three out of six. It's like she would need to go to rocks and it's like, it's tough. It, it's a tough scenario at that point. Obviously in real life, like obviously Sarah would flip before that, like she did. But in the circumstance that we're in here of being restricted to the six, I do think Sarah is more than likely left on the outs. Now we can also talk about the alliance that did work together to vote out Zeke. So here we have Sarah, Aubrey, Sari, Michaela, and Andrea. And I mean, I don't think it's that interesting really. I think we get a Sarah, Sari, Michaela final three where either Sarah or Suri win the game. I think Suri definitely has the advantage, but I do think Sarah could have a shot. Though, to be fair, in this scenario, I don't think Sarah plays as cutthroat of a game than she did in reality. So I do feel like Suri probably ends up winning that. Now for HHH, where we do have the Heroes and Hustlers Alliance that broke apart when JP was booted. So here we have Ben, Chrissy, Ryan, Devin, Ashley, Lauren, and JP. Obviously, JP goes first. I mean, he did in real life. Then that's where it gets interesting because I think inherently Ben is probably the next boot, but Ben also probably has idols. But let's just assume he doesn't have idols. I think Ben goes and then Christy and Ryan are on the outs, leaving us with a Devin, Ashley, Lauren final three with Lauren probably having the most respect on the jury to win that. Now, if Ben does use his idols, it obviously just plays out like reality. And we can also talk about the alliance that did vote together to vote out JP, though, again, it's not that interesting where Joe and Mike are clearly on the outs there, get voted out back to back, and we still probably get a Lauren win. Unless we're including Ben in this and Ben idles his way to the end, whatever. But I think Lauren does probably end up winning a Devin Ashley Lauren final three. Now for Ghost Island, and here we do have the Navidi tribe. We have Wendell, Dominic, Angela, Sebastian, Kellen, Chelsea, Dez, and Chris. Obviously, Chris goes first. I mean, that was always going to happen. Really, the question after this is, is there a flip against Wendell and Dominic? Because I do feel like it's probably actually likely that it does happen with this group. I think a lot of the reason why Wendell and Dominic were able to keep the power structure that they were able to have until the end of the game was because they had the other Malolos there. They had 
the Jenna, Michael, and Libby's as very clear targets while also having the Donathan and Laurels of the world as people that were on their side. So without those people there, I think their base is definitely a lot weaker here. And I do think the Kellen, Chelsea, possibly Angela contingent, possibly Dez can definitely orchestrate a flip against Wendell and Dominic. And if that's the case, then I do think Kellen becomes the front runner. But as we saw in the real life scenario, Dez wanted to flip against Kellen. So more than likely, I think Dez probably tries to flip against her. If it's successful, I think Dez probably becomes the front runner herself. But to be honest, that still leaves some room for other boots because at that point, that's only the final four. And if Dez gets voted out at the final four, that leaves us with a Chelsea, Sebastian, Angela final three. And in that scenario, I think probably Chelsea is the front runner to win. But again, it's so rocky where... I think really it just becomes a game of who's able to pull off the last move in the season to end up pulling out the win. Next up, we have David versus Goliath. So we have a couple alliances here. First up, let's talk about the Goliath tribe that did break apart very early on in the merge. So here we have Mike, Angelina, Kara, Allison, Alec, Dan, and John Hennigan. First up, I think Dan probably goes first as he was looked at as a threat by his own tribe even at that point. I think that's followed up by John. And I think really Alec takes control of the game here. But I feel like this also leaves room open for Mike to lead a flip against Alec. Though at the same time, it's like you would need to flip Kara against him. I don't know if that actually happens to where she actively tries to get him out. But if it does happen, then I do think Allison probably follows afterwards. And we get a Mike, Angelina, and Kara final three where Mike White probably wins the game. However, it doesn't happen, I think more than likely Alec wins the game if he gets to the end. And if Alec isn't there to win the game, I think Allison wins the game. And also, what's kind of funny about this season that we can also talk about the Davids. So here we do have Nick, Davey, Christian, Gabby, Carl, and I guess we'll add in Elizabeth. Why not? I mean, to be honest, it doesn't really matter because Elizabeth goes first anyway. They all agreed to vote out Elizabeth. But after that, I think it becomes interesting. I mean, I think more than likely it becomes two sides where Davey and Carl on one side and Christian and Gabby on the other. Nick is in the middle. I do think he sides with Davey and Carl. More than likely, they reach the final three together where Nick probably wins the jury vote due to being the main orchestrator of the game at that point. Though I think there's definitely a chance that Davey could win just due to his likability. Now for Edge of Extinction, where we have (laughs) some alliances to talk about. First up, let's talk about Kama. Uh, Kama obviously had the numbers coming into the merge. These blew up right away, but we can talk about Gavin, Julie, Victoria, Aurora, Ron, Julia, Eric, and Joe. And I think right away it plays out pretty similarly. I think Joe goes first. I think Eric gets taken out as a big threat, followed by Julia again as another bigger threat on the board. Then after that, I think Ron is targeted next. And then I think Aurora is taken out next as a big threat. So that leaves us with Gavin, Julie, and Victoria, where Victoria probably wins that jury vote. Now, we can also talk about the alliance that voted together to take out Eric. So in this alliance, we do have Gavin, Lauren, Victoria, Aurora, War Dog, Kelly, David, and Julia. And I think very clearly David is taken out first. I mean, he was someone that was just added in at the last second. I think Aurora probably becomes the swing vote here maybe Gavin, where obviously we have the Lauren, War Dog, and Wentworth contingent. And then we have Victoria and Julia together, possibly with Aurora, possibly with Gavin. And like at that point, I do think the comma side does get the advantage here, where War Dog and Wentworth are probably the next two boots. I could see Lauren being saved here, especially because she had a really good relationship with Gavin. And at that point, I think probably Aurora goes next, followed by really could be anyone. I think Gavin's in the best spot. I mean, that's the thing about Gavin on this season is I think Gavin was always in the best spot to get to the end. I just think he always has trouble winning the jury vote because he plays in a very stale way. But if we do get a Gavin, Victoria, Julia final three, I think it's between Julia and Victoria. I think Julia probably has the respect from jury at that point to win. If it's with Lauren there instead of probably Julia. I think in that scenario, probably Victoria does win the game, though I do think Lauren has a shot. Now, as I said, though, there is a chance that Gavin flips to the other side to side with like Lauren, War Dog, and Wentworth as he had a really good relationship with Lauren and Wentworth. But if that group does get to the end, which I don't think is even likely because even War Dog wanted to get rid of Wentworth at some point, I think Wentworth probably wins the game inherently, though, again, there's so much wonkiness there. Really, at the end of the day, with a lot of these scenarios, it's essentially Gavin that becomes the kingmaker. I don't think Gavin wins many final jury scenarios, but I think he essentially decides who does end up winning. Now for Island of the Idols, here we do have the new Vokai plus Dean, the group that did vote together to vote out Kelly, 
So here we have Tommy, Dean, Lauren, Dan, Elaine, Elizabeth, Missy, and Aaron. And I think moving forward, I think the flip against Missy and Aaron probably still happen. And I think Elizabeth is probably soon to follow, leading us to probably a very similar situation as the real life scenario, where here we have Tommy, Dean, Lauren, Dan, and Elaine at the end. I think Elaine becomes a very big target moving forward. And I think Tommy's best case scenario is getting to the end against Dean and Dan, which was his original plan as he obviously wins the game. And a pretty similar vote to what he did in the real life scenario I do think there's also a chance that Lauren gets to the end, that she squeaks on by and gets to the end with Tommy and probably Dan at that point, where I think at that point Lauren is being looked at as the most likely winner, though I do think there's still a chance that Tommy pulls out the win as well. But either way, I do feel like Tommy recognized the threat that Lauren was and was going to try to flip against her at some point within the game. So I do feel like Tommy is still the most likely winner in most scenarios. And now for the final season, we do have winners at war. And here we're going to be talking about the alliance that did stick together to vote out Wendell. So here we have Tony, Sarah, Ben, Denise, Jeremy, Kim, Sophie, Tyson, and Adam. And I think the initial thought is that Adam gets voted out first. Obviously, Adam was the next boot immediately afterward. Though, really, this is a 4v4 situation where Tony, Sarah, Ben, and Sophie are on one side. And then we have Denise, kind of Jeremy, Kim, and Tyson on the other side. So Adam could also just play Kingmaker if they decide to go against each other here. Though, realistically, I think Denise could also be someone that flips. So I do think the most likely boot in that scenario is that Tyson does go home. But with the numbers being so restricted here, Tony doesn't have the numbers to flip against Sophie like he did in the real life scenario. And at that point, I think so much is up in the air because I do think Tony, Sarah, and Ben are still the most likely to get to the end together. But at this point, Tony doesn't have the advantage that he got from voting out Sophie. He doesn't have that as his main talking point to really demonstrate the game that he was playing. So because of that, I do think Sarah probably has a bigger chance of winning the game. But, I mean, Tony is Tony. And I do think Tony probably still would have respect from the jury. Probably enough to win the game in that scenario. Now we can also talk about the people that voted together to vote out Tyson, that five-person group that huddled together at Tribal. So we have Tony, Sarah, Ben, Nick, and Sophie. I, I mean, it's pretty much the same scenario, though. I mean, Nick goes first. And then, to be honest, actually, at that point, maybe Tony would be in danger. But, I mean, if we're talking about forced fire making and everything, then, like, if he gets put up against Sarah, obviously, he probably ends up winning. But I definitely think that's not the greatest scenario for him. Obviously, if Tony ends up going home, I think Sophie is the most likely to win out of her, Ben, and Sarah. However, if Tony gets to the end with Sophie, I think it becomes a bit more interesting. But to be honest, even then, I, I think Sophie definitely has the advantage there. But, I mean, there we go. I mean, that is every season of Survivor talking about what would happen if the majority alliances had stuck together and gotten to the end. Again, this video did end up turning out to be a bit more messy than I thought it was. I didn't realize how much of a cluster F the more recent seasons have been in terms of majority alliances where there's just so many flips and turns that so many gr different groups come together from round to round. And I think through that makes this what if video kind of a jumbled mess, but whatever it is what it is. So like always, obviously I have more videos planned moving down the road, have more what if videos, have more general survivor big brother videos probably other topics that no one cares about but for now that is the video thank you for watching